What's up YouTube and privileged ones, hello and welcome back to the channel for another episode. In today's video, it's going to be one hell of a banger. We've got a ton of information packed about Destiny 3. And for many of you, it shouldn't be a surprise that Destiny 3 content is already leaking across the internet as we speak. Over the last couple of weeks, a bunch of rumors, speculations, and supposed leaks have made their access granted on the internet, especially the subreddits of Destiny from one person specifically, on in the Nine. Now, on in the Nine in the past has had leaks and speculations made by Destiny and Destiny 2 and have always been proven to be true. He is a very good source for information early on before any of the developers finally announce something. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video and discuss Destiny 3. Firstly, before we start talking about rumors, leaks, and speculations on Destiny 3, I want to talk about the facts and information that we know so far about the relationship between Bungie and Activision, the developers and the publishers that have so far created and have promoted Destiny the Game and Destiny 2. The contract between these two companies were as followed, a 10-year contract releasing a minimum of three games, Destiny the Game being the first one, Destiny 2 the second one, and then Destiny 3, the supposed game that has leaked across the internet over the last couple of weeks. Now, following these releases, Destiny the game released with a rough start. The community liked the game at first, and then a couple of weeks later, it had a decline because it didn't have enough content to keep everyone busy. Then they released The Taken King, a massive expansion that grew the promotion of the game, allowed for the community to grow, and really strive to like the game. And made them excited for Destiny 2, the sequel of Destiny 1. With that, the release of Destiny 2 was not what the community intended. And then, that also had a decline in sales and a decline in the player base. Meaning that Activision really wanted Bungie to make the game different so that they could bring the player base back. Now, Activision had a lot of remarks towards this, which made the game worse. And then later, Bungie was like, okay, we need to make a game the community really loves and enjoys. They started releasing some really good updates for Destiny 2, and now Destiny 2 is back in the player base's overall standing in relationship, a good game. Now there are a couple of challenges that the community are still facing with the game and the developers, and previously the publishers, and there's a lot of issues here and a lot of tensions. A lot of people are like, well, I don't really like the game because it's not striving towards PvP. I don't really like the game because it's not striving towards PvE. It's striving more towards the casual player base. It's striving more towards the competitive player base. A lot of people have a lot of remarks and comments towards all of this. But overall, what happened is Bungie and Activision have split ways. The contract is now terminated and Bungie has all creative rights to the game. Why this makes it a good idea to develop Destiny 3 now is that they have all the creative rights and possibilities to being able to create Destiny 3 as a game that the entire community wants to see. From every single comment that's ever been made about Destiny the Game and Destiny 2, it makes a lot of sense now to start developing Destiny 3 into the game that everyone wants to play. Alongside that, during the release of the Taken King of Destiny the game, the very first game that ever released in the franchise, they started developing Destiny 2. And it takes a lot of time to develop a game. So, for them to start developing Destiny 3 in the second to third year of Destiny 2, it makes a lot of sense. Because they do need time to put resources towards the next game for it to even release on a timely manner. If they wouldn't start developing it now, then they would end up having to delve all the resources at the end of Destiny 2's life to be able to start developing the next game. And we wouldn't even have the next game until later down the road. With that being said, this makes a lot of sense and I understand why Bungie would be developing Destiny 3 now. So it's time to start talking about the leaks, rumors, and speculations. This first leak comes from Ana the Nine, a member of the Destiny subreddit that I've mentioned earlier, and a source who has accurately leaked details about the past first two games of the franchise. According to the leak, the new enemy race of Destiny 3 is going to be called the Veil, 
a race of astro demons who are described in an existing Destiny 2 lore that came during the Black Armory expansion. Having dark greenish skin, sharp claws, and a distinct stench of wet earth, the story summary provided by the leak focuses on the God of the Veil and its conflict with the Traveler. The leak says as followed, During the collapse, the God of the Veil was slain in a conflict with the Light. Since then, the Veil have been waiting for the Traveler to reawaken so that they can siphon its power to resurrect their dead God. One of the biggest rumors swirling around the internet is that Destiny 3 will have no PvP, but instead have an open world that blends PvP and PvE together. The leak from On in the Nine confirms that part about the world is PvPVE areas said to function similar to the game Planetside, but there is no details to either confirm or deny that those areas will be replacing traditional arena-based crucible PvP modes from the first two games of Destiny. Even some rumors that have made their rounds ever since Destiny 1 sound like they're finally confirmed for Destiny 3 including the game including darkness-based subclasses, the inclusion of the long-teased Pyramid Destiny Dark Ships, with one of them serving as an endgame location similar to Destiny 2's Dreaming City, and the locations of Old Chicago, Europe, and even the return of Venus. According to this exact same leak from On in the Nine, Destiny 3 will cater to a hardcore audience, bringing in more RPG elements and being much more harder than either the first two games. This is quite a turnaround from Destiny 2, which stripped out many of the RPG elements and difficulty to cater to a wider, casual audience. Now Guardians, I want to take a second to mention that 100% of this information so far is unproven by Bungie. Therefore, it's still a leak, still a speculation, still a rumor. I know some people hate rumor videos, but I'm just trying to supply the news and information so far supplied on the internet from a reliable source. Now, On in the Nine has been proven to be a reliable source in the past, and I'm just trying to provide this information to everyone in the player base. With that being said, again, just take all this information with a grain of salt moving forward, and let's move on to the next article. This next leak about Destiny 3 is coming from 4chan, another reliable source for Destiny content. With that being said, this information can't be confirmed nor denied, but there's a lot of information about the game and what it could be like once it releases. Based on the intel, each planet is larger than that of Destiny 2, which hints at the fact that Bungie is aiming for even bigger stuff moving forward even after Bungie and Activision split apart. Even 4chan is commenting towards the fact that this title is said to return to the hardcore formula that has made people fall in love with the series originally during Destiny the game. Thanks to the split, Trials of the Nine are said to be back, with a faction built specifically for them as the story revolves around the second collapse. The Veil, which was hinted by On in the Nine previously, wants apparently to use the light to resurrect the Formless One. A Cabal and a Fallen would be one of the enemy races replaced by the Veil. In this story, the darkness has completely decimated Earth and Europe, Old Chicago, Venus, and the Hollowed Spire, the later an endgame zone similar to the Dreaming City would be the game's base worlds. You can read a lot more about this in 4chan's original post. I'll have linked down below in the description. But moving on, let's move over to On in the Nine's final post. So Guardians, back to On in the Nine, our well-known Destiny Online community expert accurately leaking out information about the franchise for the past couple of years. And now the mysterious user has potentially pulled back the curtain on Destiny 3. A large info dump that was posted recently by On in the Nine that we've already went over discussed the Destiny 3 story, gameplay, and details. But by looking at On in the Nine's Reddit threads comments, we can learn even more about the game, like the supposed leaked release date of Destiny 3. When asked about Destiny 3's release date, Shadow of the On in the Nine said, I didn't really talk about this 100% confirmed, but I can basically guarantee a 2020 release date as a multi-platform launch title for the PlayStation 5 and Project Scarlet. So if the leaked information is accurate and if predicted on the next gen console release dates are right, it seems that Destiny 3 fans can expect the game to launch on November 2020. 
Now it is possible that Destiny 3 could very well launch before November 2020, perhaps in September of that year. The Destiny franchise has traditionally favored September release dates, and it would be odd for Bungie to change things up with Destiny 3. Perhaps Destiny 3 will first launch for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in September 2020, and then launch for next generation consoles once they become available a bit later in that year. This certainly wouldn't be unprecedented in the gaming community. Grand Theft Auto V first launched on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 before making moves towards the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and the first Destiny was also released on cross-gen titles, and since Bungie is presumably publishing Destiny 3 itself now, that it has split from Activision, it wouldn't make much financial sense for the company to shrink its potential audience size by only launching for next-gen consoles. So PlayStation 4 and Xbox One still make a lot of sense for the developers to release on those game consoles. So far, Bungie hasn't really commented much on the leaks rumors except to confirm that Destiny 3 will have Crucible PvP after some speculation arose that it would ditch it entirely. As for when fans can expect Bungie to start talking about Destiny 3, if the 2020 release date is correct, then more official information will likely come at some point next year. In the meantime, we must stress that this Destiny 3 leak, even though it's from a somewhat credible leaker, should be taken with a grain of salt. Again, these are all rumors and speculations on Destiny 3. A lot of the stuff that's been mentioned sounds really exciting. PlayStation 5, next-gen Xbox, being able to have a brand new enemy race, darkness subclasses, all of it sounds really exciting to me. And being able to have a larger open world playing field with more RPG element roles in the game, a hardcore audience for farming and grinding, it honestly sounds like a fantastic concept. But with that being said, again, 100% of this is just rumors and speculations. Take it with a grain of salt, Guardians. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember to smash a like on it. Leave your thoughts, opinions, and comments down below in the comment section, and if you're new to the channel, to keep up to date on news and information pertaining to Destiny the Game, Destiny 2, and now Destiny 3, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for everyone, stay violent and be privileged.